shirt. Sick. <laughs> best movie ever. Best, actually, best dinosaur movie ever. Is there's not many dinosaur movies though? I mean, the thing is, like, what what year did it come out? Ninety nine. Um, it's better than Jurassic Village, I guess. The other movie that they made. Dude, Jurassic Park kidding. is a classic. I kind of want to watch it again right now. Should we just like stop the episode and go watch it? Let's go take a two hour break. Watch uh, <laughs> part one. Come back. Let's do it. Part one was the best, by the way. The rest. I didn't watch the so. newer one. I watched one with newer one with Chris Pratt. I didn't watch the other one though. They're decent, but. Not like one. I don't know what it is about one. Jurassic Park is definitely one of those series you got to continue to make. You know, they can just always be sick. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, so what are we talking about today, bro? Today we're talking about you. Me? Yeah, man. So if you don't like this guy, tune out. You know, just <laughs> X, hit the X on the YouTube button. No, I'm just kidding. We're going to talk about you and your vehicle that you own, which is the Tesla Model 3. And we're going to talk about some of your experiences with it. Give you, uh, have you give some insight to potential buyers, some current owners, um, some anti-Tesla people who might not like Tesla. For sure. Um, There's a lot of those guys. Yeah. And, you know, we'll try, we'll just get into um, some of uh, your experiences. What do you think about it? Let's do it, man. What if you're like, nah, you know, I'm good, and we just like end, ended the episode yeah. right there? <laughs> uh, actually, don't buy a Tesla. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. Um, uh, no, I mean, this is exciting because you know I love my car. For those who don't know, you bought it in what, 2019? 2019. Uh, you, yeah. You I think bought it a Model 3. April, I think. Yeah, yeah, Tesla Model 3 Standard Range Plus. So it has 240 mile range. Sure. It's, it was the lowest uh, range. Uh, well, you could get, I guess, the standard, regular standard, which was like the lowest, lowest range. What is the lowest range? Yeah, I don't even know. Eight miles? I don't know. I think the plus had like just more. It might have been 220 or something. 220. Okay, it's still not bad. Yeah, so I got the standard range plus because, you know, I'm cheap and brown. Yeah, that you are for sure. Yeah. I, I will not argue. I'm, I'll argue many things with you that one. <laughs> I will not. Um, so what got in? what got you into Tesla? Uh, and 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 what tell us about your line of thinking about you know how you decided on a model 3 yeah so um it was a, it was a struggle honestly to decide which vehicle to get so i went through this time where uh, i was driving like my 3 series right the beamer mm-hmm. and i was just like you know kind of craving a, a new car um so i ended up getting the scat pack right yeah the scat pack charger yeah and so that thing was a monster sure right but um, that thing was uh, not good on gas. Not right? good on I mean, gas. It's huh? obvious, right? It's not good on Hemi gas. Hemi V8. Yeah. You had a work commute that was long. And um, you probably had to fill up every three days. Yeah, exactly. So I had a super long commute. So then, you know, I'm looking at... Uh, I, I've always been a Tesla fanboy. Mm-hmm. I've always loved Elon Musk, loved the whole Tesla movement. I mean, they're, when the S came out and it was just sick, right? Like right. it just looked like a whole new car, just like very futuristic so like um you know that i I was into tesla like back in like 2012 2013 you know me and my friends would always like talk about tesla and how we wanted one but back then they were like over 100 grand right so like you know i had a scat pack and uh, i was sucking up gas you know just taking all my money away yeah (laughs) you know not including the car payment and stuff but um i decided to go with a tesla because i was going to save money on gas um and Mainly because of autopilot, right? Right. Um, that was that was in the works. It yeah. wasn't fully auto yet. I mean, it still isn't fully auto. Um, but you did have the pretty much autopilot on like major freeways and highways. Yeah. But so originally, I wanted a Model S. A lot of people probably don't know this, but I wanted a Model S. I was looking at P eighty five Ds. They cost about forty five thousand dollars at the time. Uh, with autopilot, right? Used or new? Used. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that was like my price range that I was trying to like get a car for. It was like about 45 grand. Sure. Um, and I didn't want to go over uh, 45 grand, you know, because strict budgets, right? Yeah. I mean, that's a lot for a car, you know, entry, especially, I mean, I'm, a lot of people buy expensive cars. I get it. But the average person does not want to spend more than 40 to 45 yeah. grand on a vehicle. It's just yeah. too much. And especially it's way too much. Yeah. I mean, I was looking at used too. So like your payments are going to be higher if you you know, buy a used vehicle. Um, but the biggest thing that made me, like, lean towards getting a Model 3 was that it was newer. Um, it still had just as much space. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe, of course, it's a little bit smaller than the Model 3, but mm-hmm. it had a good amount of space. Uh, it was newer. It had new technology. It had the latest autopilot. Sure. Um, 
And um, just, you know, it was going to have a longer warranty too. Right, right, right. I mean, and plus at the time they were offering the tax incentive. Right, Which worked right. out in my favor. And what was that at the time? So I believe it was like 3700 right? 3750 or something? Yeah, sounds about right. Yeah. Um, but no, that makes sense. You want something that's kind of evolving with time, futuristic. Yeah. And um, no, I mean, I think it was the right move. For yeah. sure. I, I, I agree. Uh, I... I Sometimes I get the the like craving to like you know get into something else. Sure. Yeah. This is the the day that I actually brought the car home. And so, just so you guys know, like yeah. in Michigan back then, you couldn't buy a Tesla. You had to buy it from uh, Ohio. Sure. Cleveland. So I actually drove down to Cleveland to pick up my car. So yeah, we have a picture here of your first day with the car. Yeah. Um, looks like a standard white Tesla Model Three. Basic white with yeah. a white interior. It's changed since. It's evolved yeah. on its own. You didn't even do anything. It just, yeah. it just evolved. Um, it just transforms. Yeah, no, it, it's, it was a big buy. It was a big news at the time. I mean, honestly, even though it was only two years ago, there weren't that many Tesla. You were like the only Tesla that I would see in our area. Yeah, for sure. There's not um, a lot. There wasn't a lot of Teslas in Michigan to begin with. Yeah, uh, a lot's changed since. I mean, I think it's definitely growing, which There's is cool. Tesla's all over now. Yeah. Um, and the cool thing about it is that, you know, as it grows, your features only get better because they get more data on, you know, driving and people having Teslas and exactly it gets cooler for you guys. You know, it all goes into the cloud system. Yep. Tracking us every second. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's awesome. Um, and I know you've already touched on this earlier, but what would you say are your, you know, top two to three favorite features of the Tesla model three? So my favorite feature for sure, definitely the autopilot, right? Yeah. Like this thing, like autopilot just takes the stress out of driving, mm-hmm. right? And like, you know, a lot of people are like, you know, um, I love driving, you know, I just, I, I have to be in control of the car or whatever. But when you're driving a hundred miles a day, mm-hmm. you don't want to drive, right? Like right. when you're sitting in traffic for two, two and a half, three hours a day, mm-hmm. you just don't want to drive anymore. That's every single day. Right. You know, so the autopilot just took the stress out of driving. And the the thing is that you're still spending the two, three hours driving, right? Right. Like on the road, but like you're just not like stopping and going and blah and this and that. So that's right. definitely my coolest feature and it keeps evolving over time. So like the autopilot that you buy today will be completely different. I mean, if you buy full self-driving, let me correct that. So full I have self. the full self-driving. Sure. You know, but um, even if you have regular autopilot, it's still a game changer, Right. But, I mean, if you get the full FSD, you know, like, your car every month is just going to get better and better over time. And, like, the car, like, the, the capabilities that the car had when I first bought the car are, like, nothing compared to what it is now. Right. It's a whole different monster. You That's know? And, awesome. And, yeah, and the second feature I would say is over there updates, right? Like, mm-hmm. like I said, autopilot's going to get better and better. And there's not many cars that have over the air updates. But not only that, but they've added like, you know, Netflix and Hulu and light shows and games and Sonic the Hedgehog, you know, you know, they, they've added all this stuff for free. And there's really no other car manufacturer that you could say is giving you free stuff after you purchase the car. They want more money from you, Mm. you know, and um, I think that's one of the coolest. Yeah, it's really outside the norm of the car industry, which is kind of slimy. Yeah. Um, uh, The car manufacturers do don't give you anything more than what they give you initially. Yeah. And when they when they, you do buy it initially, you're usually getting ripped off. Yeah. Um, but no, that's awesome of Tesla to do and it's a it's a pretty big deal for sure. To as a buyer and as a customer, you you stay loyal to a company like that. Yeah, definitely. What about the least favorite features? You know, the least favorite, uh, I was having a hard time coming up with like uh, a you know, like a feature or something that I didn't like about mm-hmm. the car mm-hmm. because like when I went uh, into buying a Tesla Model 3, I already knew, like, everything about it, like, sure. you know, based on the research. I would say after owning it mm-hmm. and driving it, you know, because I have, like, 29,000 miles now, right? Sure. And my least favorite thing about the car, I would say, is the seat bottoms. The seat bottoms. Yeah, and I know that a lot of people are like, these are the comfiest seats I've ever sat in. Like, yeah. you know, I complained about it before and people were like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Like, these are the most comfortable seats I've, I've ever, like, you know, sat. Right. But let me tell you something. Dodge's seats are so comfortable. Really? They're so padded and they have, like, firm padding, mm-hmm. you know, and I just enjoy 
the Dodge seats. They hug you a lot better. I'm not saying that the Model 3 seats don't hug you, mm-hmm. but when you're driving long distances like I was, the seats were like my only issue. Like I just wanted like either more firmness or more padding. I know it's like getting really picky. I mean, you do have a high maintenance butt, you know. So yeah. <laughs> you know, we got uh, we got to pretty much polish it for the show. We got a little, yeah. we got a special <laughs> a chair. Polisher. Yeah, we got a special chair for you. Um, so, you know, it's like a, it's like a third person on the show that we kind of like, kind of <laughs> treat it like a third person. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, I understand some of your concerns, but some of it, you kind of, you know, we can't, can't, can't take it with the grain of salt. Um, but no, I, I really like the, what kind of blew me away about the Tesla that, um, one of my f- coolest features and it seems like a cost saver was the regenerative braking. Oh, yeah. Which was hard to learn at first, but then when you explained to me you're not using your brakes when you have yeah. that feature. Yeah, because you and, can do one-pedal driving. Right, and you're not, and you're conserving the your actual brakes. I was blown away by that. I'm like, dude, that's insane. Yeah, I mean, they say that Teslas have lifetime brakes. Right. You know, I haven't heard of many people replacing the actual brake pads or rotors, mm-hmm. but um, so far, I mean, I love that feature. I get used. I got used to it, so like when I get into a regular car... I'm like, wait a second, it's not stopping, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's it's just it's a cool feature. It took me a while to get used to it. Still not used to it. But um This thing changes like your whole life. Like, yeah, it, your whole it, aspect of a car. Exactly. It changes it. Like, for example, like getting in a car and starting it. Right. You don't start a Tesla. When right. you when you get out of the car, when you stop somewhere and you park, you don't stop the car. So a lot of times I get into like a, a gas car and we park and I just leave the car running by accident. And I mm. get out and I'm like, oh, wait, you know, I got to turn it off, you know? Absolutely. No, I mean, just, just so many cost savings all around. Yeah. So definitely. Um, I like that they did that. Um, next question. If there was no Tesla, which EV would you purchase? So, yeah, this is a tough one. Yeah, that's you why know? I said, that's why I came up with that. I was uh, like, because it's so far ahead of the pack that when you start, when you get rid of it, it's like, oh my God, what's left? Yeah. So a lot of people might be shocked with this answer, but I would literally not buy an EV. Dang. Yeah. Um, the only reason why I bought an EV is yeah. because, you know, it's Tesla. Right. So Tesla's you're more a of a different... Tesla guy than an EV guy. Yeah, definitely. So I would be more of a Tesla fanboy than the whole EV movement. Sure. Right? And sure. yeah, it's all because of, you know, Papa Elon Musk. Elon you know Musk, saying? man. And uh, he's the richest changing, man in the world. Yeah. He's changing the whole auto industry. Every industry this guy touches. Right. He's, you know, shaking it up. Mm-hmm. You know, and uh, look at the auto manufacturers right now. They're, they're scrambling to get some EVs out there, trying to get some exposure. For what? Right. They were saying Elon is not a competitor. Yeah. You know, and it's because there's Teslas on the road everywhere now. Well, technically, I guess he's not a competitor because he's so far ahead, right? They're competing with themselves while Tesla is yeah, just kind that's of true. in their own stratosphere very very true so yeah my answer would be i would not have an ev if i could not buy a tesla right now but you gotta pick one i can't pick one you can't I, pick i would never one buy EV. i would literally probably drive my old beamer all right so the chevy bolt um, so <laughs> who given that question yeah which manufacturer that is producing evs that you would never buy clearly now yeah. we know that do you think is act- can potentially rival or threaten Tesla? And I'm not saying that's happening now. I'm not saying it's going to happen in three to four years. Yeah. Let's say eight to ten years down the line. Who's giving Tesla a hard time? If the, I mean, it might, it might be a company we don't even know yet, right? Yeah. Because that's a lot of time. But who do you think right now that is producing EVs or not even producing EVs could threaten Tesla's number one spot? So, yeah, a lot of people might not agree with this one either. So personally, and I, I think I've mentioned this on the show probably in a previous episode before, but I personally believe that the biggest competition that Tesla is going to have is actually the new EV makers. Mm. And it's not going to be the existing manufacturers like BMW, um, Ford, GM. Sure. Um, I mean, they might be able to sell like you know, more vehicles because of their name. But like, if you, I feel like those guys who are buying into those companies are used to gas, you know, powered cars and they're going to stay with gas powered cars until the end. That's just my opinion. Right. Um, But the new EV makers, that's all they know is EVs, right? So if you have a company like GM putting 75% of their energy into gas-powered vehicles mm-hmm. and 25% of their energy into EVs, and the EVs are not even selling. Right. 
You know, they're not even selling. They're not even on the road. You barely see their EVs. And then you have a company like Lucid and Rivian. So I believe that Lucid, Rivian, and any other new company that comes out will be potentially the competition for Tesla because these guys are just straight EV. That's all they know. Right, right. So you, you know? think the bigger threats are the Lucids and the Rivians of the world versus like a Ford and uh um Yeah, definitely. GM. They don't have to follow the typical sales of a regular car. Right. They don't have to follow the whole service, you know, infrastructure that was created by right. the big three or, or whatever manufacturer. They're right. doing things differently and Guess what? People who are looking at EVs want to do something differently. People right. who don't want to do something differently are going to buy a gas-powered car. Right. Because that's th- what they're used to. Personally, I would think it's Ford only because that Ford has so much tradition and backing yeah. behind its name, even if it's not the best EV. And you're right about the points you make about the newer ones, but Ford has – they do big things at certain times, and I think they, yeah. they, they would be the one. I don't know if that's I mean, there's the a case. lot of Mach-E's on the road. That's here. what I'm saying, but we're no, also we're in Michigan. Not, yeah, we're in Michigan, so I don't know how many there are Right, else. like uh, – what was his name? Seth was on the show. Yeah. He said that he barely sees – I mean, he lives in what? Well, it was Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Yeah. They don't see as much American. Yeah, yeah. Right? But, I mean, we – I'm sure that a lot of them are employees. Right. You know? Um, I But I can see Ford being up there with, with Tesla yeah. one day. Um, but yeah, I can see your point to, to this, uh, I always forget the lucid air and the Rivian. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so real quick, favorite gas powered vehicles. If you, uh, I know we've had an episode about this pretty much, but touch up on a few of them. Yeah. So definitely right now, if I didn't have a Tesla, Mm -hmm. I would definitely get a charger Hellcat. Charger Hellcat. You're just a fanboy of the charger. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I just love that thing. You like muscle and you like... Horsepower. I don't want to be the fastest guy on the road, but I want to have like that rumble. You want to you know, be a badass. Fat tires. You want to be a straight badass. Yeah, exactly. You need a, you're the one who needs a cowboy hat. <laughs> um, no, yeah, no, I like a couple, that pick. Yeah, a couple other cars. You know, the V10 M6. Sure. It's classic. Yeah. And then, you know, the GTRs, right? Like, I've always been a GTR yeah, fanboy. For sure. Um, but right now, if I didn't have the Tesla, definitely Charger Hellcat. Any luxury, any luxury vehicles? You know, I don't really care too much about, like, luxury. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I would say no. Not right no, now. No I, normally, I would have, probably have, like, a newer BMW, sure. like, lined up. But, like, all whatever they're making right now, I'm just not interested in. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, no, that's cool. That's cool. Um, so, this is a big question that I have. Yeah. Um, that concerns me. But if you ever exhausted your battery life. Yeah. What would you do from there? Um, uh, let me tell you. So go to the eighth. I think it's the eighth picture. Okay. So I would have a- to call somebody <laughs> with a generator. <laughs> so I'd be on the side well, of the okay, road with so- a generator charging my car. <laughs> no. I Okay. So maybe you misunderstood my question. Okay. What if your battery, your range was done? Like you, ba- your battery was like my ba- I need a new battery. You need a new battery. <laughs> I love the generator idea. <laughs> You're on the side of the road. You got to call someone with the generator. Hey, you got a generator? Yeah. Can you bring it to air? Wow. That's interesting. You could do that, huh? No. I, I, if the question was that, though, uh-huh. you, Tesla like will come and tow your car to a, the nearest supercharger. Right, right. But if I had to buy it Do they charge you new, for that? Because that seems kind of sure. negligent on your part. Like, what Yeah, you I'm sure they do charge you. Right. Um, so, yeah, if my battery died, I mean, depending on how much it would cost at the time... Um, because right now they're like twenty five thousand dollars. You that's, saw that guy that like blew up his model. Well, S. that's why I brought it up because like I didn't even like we never heard any stories yet. And then there's some dude in Finland runs out of battery, gets a bill from Tesla saying if you want to fix this, you're gonna have to pay twenty two grand. So kind of as a spit in their face, he blew up his car. Yeah, which I shit, I might have done the same thing, man. <laughs> you know so. What do you feel about that? But that obviously you're not worried about that. You don't drive that much. Your range isn't getting depleted yeah but you, there's some people who are driving that much so what do you think how would you react i mean i think it's natural to like you know be cautious of that and like kind of dread that day yeah i mean look at the iphones right like batteries are dying all the time so it's inevitable your battery will die one day I mean, right it just depends on if it's going to be under your ownership 
at the time, right? Right. Um, if I was hit with a $25,000 bill, I'd probably have a heart attack. <laughs> uh, start a GoFundMe account. <laughs> <laughs> so you heard it here, folks. If his battery dies, he will also die. <laughs> um, I will die with the car. Yeah, straight up. Like That's it. That's the end of your life. Yeah. And um, I'm hoping that, like, you know, there's going to be third-party, like, companies that step up and, like, be able to, like, re, you know, um, re, like, uh, um, like redo the batteries, right? Yeah. And um, fix whatever, like take apart the whole battery pack, replace any modules that are, you know need to be replaced instead of replacing the whole entire yeah, battery. Yeah, that's tough. I mean, it's just a tough situation. Yeah. That's my biggest concern about EVs in general is every everything that we know that is electric or is battery powered does not last forever. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it might last 10 to 15 years, which is awesome, but... Um, obviously it's a car, so you want it to yeah. last as long as you want it to. And, uh, there's, you know, there's a lot of Teslas on the road, like, you know, that have like 300, 400,000 miles. Right. But I think that batteries age right. over time. Exactly. And it doesn't really matter, you know, how many miles, you could do a million miles in one year. Right. But like, if you own an EV for 20 years, so it's that's more of a, you're... it's more of a time thing than it is a actual distance traveled, you're saying? That's, that's what I feel like. Yeah. Okay. Dude, honestly though, if you're get, if you get three hundred thousand miles out of a Tesla and you have to blow it up, that's satisfactory. I man. know, yeah, that's good. You got your I, money's worth, dude. You saved dude, probably you know way more right. on gas, right? How many gas powered vehicles do you have? You know, do you know that someone has that have lasted three hundred thousand miles? Probably zero. Yeah, zero to like only two. Hondas, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the Hondas uh, from the two thousands. Yeah, the, the Honda Accord. <laughs> those, exactly. Those lasted forever. Yeah. Yeah, that's just a big one, you know. You got it's a scary, it's a scary thought. You know? Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. It's a, it's a thought that all EV owners think about whether they want to admit it or not. Yeah, absolutely. you know, the hardcore EV guys are always like, yeah, don't worry about the battery. How could you not worry about the battery? <laughs> yeah, you just well, spent fifty thousand or a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> on something, and don't worry about the battery. They're yeah. gonna last forever. No, exactly. Like, don't worry about the there's battery. Teslas with three, four hundred thousand miles on them. Yeah. Okay, but there's also Teslas that have like twenty thousand miles that need new batteries, but warranty covered it. Exactly. Exactly. It's definitely a concern throughout. Yeah. So, um, you gotta take care of the battery. I yeah. mean, um, the other take thing care I'm, of it. Love it. So you these know, these, it these electric cars are very heavy, huh? They're, They're very, very these heavy. Batteries. Yeah, because the whole battery, the whole bottom of the car is batteries. That's wild. Yeah. My friend made a point the other day that electric vehicles are going to mess up our roads more because <laughs> they weigh more. <laughs> yeah. Potentially. I mean, the road's are already jacked, so there's no hope for that anyways. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, so probably don't, you probably don't have a strong answer for this, but what what's uh, something you regret about purchasing a, a Tesla Model 3 or, I the, would, or the specific edition that you bought, you know, yeah. to get more specific? The only regret I have is that I didn't get a performance Model 3. Yeah. Um, not because of the extra range. Like, the 240 range doesn't bother me at it's all. It's not a big difference. Yeah. Um, I mean, it is a pretty big difference. I think what you, do you get got? 325. Oh, I'm sorry. You have 240. I have 240. Oh, I thought you said the that the performance has a, I believe, two, 325. Oh no, that's a huge yeah, difference. Yeah, so it's I a big difference. You, yeah, I thought you said the performance had 240. Oh, no, no, that's great. Yeah, so the performance is the key, right? Like you can just go way faster, and I'm a performance guy, and like I just wish I probably would have just not been so cheap about it, you I mean, know, at the time, and just it wasn't. It, it, you saved some good money though. Yeah. Did you not? I mean, how no, much more? No, no. I remember back at the time, it was like, if you wanted dual motor, it was 10000 more. And then if you wanted uh, performance, it was like 10000 more. So like, it was $20,000. But I still feel like if I could go back in time, I probably would have got a performance. It's a lot of money, but yeah. Even I though mean, it was I like see. out of my budget at the time. Yeah. But I like knowing what I know now, I would have went with performance. No, I mean, you made it. You made yours look like a performance model, though. Yeah, yeah it's funny because <laughs> a lot of people think it's performance. Mine's rear wheel drive. I drive in the snow. Yeah. You know, I don't really care. Um, but yeah, rear wheel drive, just regular Model 3. But, you know, I yeah. have to customize a little bit. <laughs> Can't wait till the su- spring, summer when you start whipping it out again. I never I never see it anymore. I, tr- I just drive the Durango now, man. It's <laughs> like, because, you know, my wife's pregnant and, like, she doesn't like sitting in the Tesla Model 3 because it's too small. Yeah, for And then sure. it's really low to the ground. And you feel every bump on the road because I have mine lowered. So, sure, sure. Durango it is. So. Final points. What are some pointers that you have for future Tesla buyers, yeah. current Tesla owners? What, what do you got? What are some general things that you might advise in, uh, yeah, in Tesla ownership? I would ownership? say, because a lot of people worry about range. Yeah. And I would say, I, I would not worry about range. 
Uh, Tesla has made it very easy to charge, whether you're charging at home or a supercharger. And it doesn't really matter, you know, because you're charging your car every day. Mm-hmm. You know, what's the difference if you have to charge your car every other, like every other day mm-hmm. or every day? Right. You know, it doesn't really matter. Um, and if you're, let's say you're doing like a hundred mile, you know, trip to work and a hundred mile trip back. Yeah. You might want to consider a longer range. Right. Right. But you know, a lot of people talk about range and they talk about range too much, you know, and it's just, you're going to charge the car every day. Yeah. So what does it matter? Like we said, I don't think it it is a concern down the line, but I mean, if you're getting, uh, if you're getting a lot out of the, you're still getting a lot out of these cars. Yeah, exactly. You know? I would say road trips are easy. A lot of people worry about road trips too. Yeah. And I have the 240 mile range. We drove to Florida. It was easy. You don't need the extra range. How much are you going to take road trips? Right. I mean, they, Tesla reinvested their money well in in the infrastructure. So that's helped you a lot. And the last point that I wanted to make too is the cold weather range. Mm. Cold weather range, like the the range loss is a real thing. Mm. People try to downplay it. And you really have to be considerate of what you have running, like the seat, the heat, uh, the seat, heated seats, mm. the climate control. You have to really consider that. Um, and if you don't, you're gonna lose range, especially when it's really cold. Like I said, a lot of people try to downplay it, but um, you have to be considerate. Mm-hmm. If you're considerate, you'll get good range. If you're not, you're gonna lose a lot of range. How much do you think you lose in the cold? Like percentage, maybe? I would say if you're considerate, like you're, you know, keeping everything in mind, probably about twenty percent range wow. loss. Yeah. Yeah. Um, me, like I love my heated seats. I love being warm. Sure. I mean, if I took like like the other day, I took a trip. Uh, it was probably 80, 90 mile round trip. Yeah. Okay. I think I probably used hundred and sixty miles. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Because, I mean, I'm using the heat and, like, I don't care, you know? No, that's a big difference. I mean, even even though, like, you know, these Hemis, these V8s, these trucks, like my truck, for example. Yeah. My range sucks right now, too, gas power. Yeah, I know, yeah. So uh, it's, it's pretty... But it's different, right? You yeah. can go to a gas station, fill up in, like, five, right. ten minutes. EV, you have to plan ahead, right? Yeah, a little, you have to know a little bit about where you're going. Yeah, and, and I wouldn't going on. be scared of it, but I'm just telling you guys it's a real thing. Awesome, man. Thanks for doing this, man. Yeah, for sure. Hopefully um, your experience goes well, and we'll see if you get that cyber truck. Yeah, definitely. If it comes out, <laughs> I'm definitely going to get it. Uh, let us know in the comments, too, if you guys have any questions regarding the Tesla Model 3. Absolutely. You know, any questions, I'll be uh, more than happy to help out. Sweet. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cars Uncensored. If you enjoyed that episode, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring the bell, share with your friends, share with your mom. And you can also find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Anchor. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.